what I want to do now is show you some slides and talk to you a little bit more about how it is that we've come to a point where we still have very segregated areas. Uh, these areas are racially defined. They certainly are, either black or increasingly Latino. But these are areas in cr that are absolutely defined by lack of income. And I'll, uh, as I tell this story, I will uh, talk a bit about how Jackson Ward was uh, split in half and how blacks with uh, middle and upper incomes were moving to other areas, forcing <coughs> poor blacks to a different area. Now, this is a map of the city of Richmond to give you uh, kind of an orientation. Uh, we're here uh, we're, we're on the north side of the river. University of Richmond is tucked away right, let's see, ah, here, here, the University of Richmond's right over here. This is actually south side Richmond. The James River actually uh, bisects the city of Richmond into north side and south side. So we're on the north side of the river. Uh, this is pretty much uh, West End University of Richmond, right here on the boundary within, within RICO. Uh, now, this isn't a large map, and it's hard to show because I know that you might be interested in kind of a frame of reference. Uh, this is, uh, uh, let's see, this is probably about broad. Oh golly, yeah, this really needs to be a bigger map. Uh, actually. I could, I could tell you this, that the red areas right here are primarily Chamberlain Avenue East, Route 1 East. You can take a ruler and draw a straight line, line down old Route 1. Route 1 used to be equivalent to Interstate 95. It was the first major highway that connected Maine to Florida. Came right through the middle of Richmond and uh, on the north side of the river, Route 1, is known as Chamberlain Avenue. On the south side, it's known as the Jeff Jefferson Davis Highway. And all of this red, by the way, the red represents today census tracts where 20% or more of the people live in poverty. Uh, and it's interesting how it is so distinct. It's not just kind of evenly scattered. I mean, this is really <coughs> packed in. I would call that segregation, highly segregated. And it's primarily Route 1 East, actually now on into Enrico County. So it's a little bit difficult to show you exactly kind of where the fan is, where VCU is, where some of you do a lot of your volunteer work. If I had a little larger map, I could, I could point that out. And I also need to point out that I've just got about a few minutes left to go, so I'm going to go through this here pretty quickly. Uh, now, there are a series of events that led to this, what I would call social segregation or economic segregation. One is a decision made many years ago uh, by Richmond leaders to participate in the public housing program. Uh, what's interesting, though, is that all of the public housing that was built in, the, in, in uh, the metropolitan area of Richmond, A, was put in the city. Not any public housing was put in the suburbs. All of it was put in the city. Secondly, it was all cram-packed into East End and North Side. There are six public housing communities in Richmond. Six. One one community is located in South Side, south of the James River. The other five are constant. This is Gilpin Court. This is Chamberlain Avenue, right here, right here. And by the way, if you continue into Chamberlain, you go into Jackson Ward. This is Jackson Ward, right here. Uh, if you travel on Interstate 95 and you're going, you want to go to Williamsburg, and you come to the fork in the road, so to speak. Here you are on Interstate 65. 
uh, I'm sorry, Interstate 95, and then you take 64 <coughs> east to Williamsburg. And this is Interstate 64. Or if you want to go to Petersburg, uh, then you turn south on I-95 going to Petersburg. So you've got Gilpin Court, and then over here in North and East Richmond, you've got four housing communities just packed together. There are only blocks separated. Whitcomb Court, Fairfield Court, Creighton Court, Mosby Court. Actually, there are two parts to Mosby Court. That in itself means that you are really going to pack poverty in one part of Richmond. Now, very quickly, uh, why that area became increasingly black is that, number one, Back in the late 1930s, uh, a federal agency known as the Homeowners Loan Corporation, uh, and by the way, the purpose of the HOLC, Homeowners Loan Corporation, was to stem the foreclosure crisis. That sounds pretty familiar, doesn't it? Uh, this is during the Great Depression. And so uh, they uh, uh, evaluated neighborhoods in cities all across the United States and they literally graded neighborhoods, A, B, C, and D. Uh, what's interesting is that white neighborhoods got either a grade A, B, or C. Uh, Windsor Farms, by the way, and we're not far away from Windsor Farms. Uh, this would be, right over here, this would be the University of Richmond. This is Windsor Farms. It was colored green. That's a grade A neighborhood. Blue was grade C. I'm sorry, blue was grade B and yellow was, was uh, 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 C, it was a C, and I don't have time to get into the criteria that they use, but I would simply say that when it came to a black neighborhood, take for example Jackson Ward. I've just told you Jackson Ward was a place where you had heads of banks, heads of department stores, you had, you had educators, you had ministers, with large churches and on and on and on and yet and yet um, Jackson Ward was given a D grade. Now over the years what happened was that these red colored neighborhoods were starved for funding because these were viewed as quote poor high risks. High risk neighborhoods don't make any funding or don't provide any funding. Well, what happens if you don't provide mortgage loans or you don't provide renovation loans in a neighborhood, you're trying to get your house fixed up and you can't get any money to get it fixed up? Well, you know what happens. <coughs> the house begins to deteriorate. A whole neighborhood can begin to deteriorate. And that's exactly what happened in these black neighborhoods. And um, um, that, that's okay. Uh, Brian, I mean, okay. Blake. <laughs> and so what happened is that those neighborhoods began to decline. And guess what comes next? What comes next are some new federal programs, slum clearance and urban renewal. Uh, and so in the mid-50s, uh, the, the leaders of the business community and the leaders the political leaders decided they wanted a big highway going uh, into the city of Richmond, going very close to downtown to really build up downtown. And some of you have heard this story that uh, uh, the Richmond Petersburg Turnpike was constructed, and by the way, that's part of Interstate 95 now. And it was by design, this was purposeful. The highway went right through the middle of Jackson Ward, cut it in half. Just 10% of the black population was dispersed. Now, what does this have with poverty? Well, just this. When that occurred, then blacks who could afford to buy a new house <coughs> obviously had to move, and then they moved a bit northward into Barton Heights and around Virginia Union University. Poor blacks didn't have any option except go to public housing, and more and more public housing was being built in Churchill, so they moved to Churchill. So we begin to see that poverty is increasing in Churchill. 
Uh, over time, you begin to see whole neighborhoods destroyed. Navy Hill, you probably hadn't even heard of. Uh, and most haven't because nothing is left of Navy Hill. It's completely gone. And so when you have uh, whole neighborhoods destroyed, when you have neighborhoods that are cut in half, and by the way, it happened again with the downtown expressway, over time it increasingly forced low-income blacks into public housing. And meanwhile, as I said, you have, with the Fair Housing Act, uh, the opportunity now for uh, middle and upper income African Americans to move to the suburbs. And so what we currently have now is this, what I call a target with a bullseye. The bullseye is that area of red. And yet it's still racially defined. North of the river, it is predominantly that those very, very poor areas, predominantly African American. In South Richmond, it is <coughs> predominantly Latino. So in short, that is really a very short uh, summary of kind of how we've moved from one kind of segregation to another kind of segregation. Uh, one difference is, has a lot to do with income. Another dif difference has to do with law. There's no law now that uh, requires that concentration of poverty. But as I indicated at the very beginning, uh, if you live in a high poverty neighborhood, surrounded by other poverty neighborhoods, surrounded by other poverty neighborhoods, then it might as well be a kind of segregation that literally locks you in, just as Jim Crow locked in black neighborhoods, you know, prior to the uh, uh, 1960s. So, that's the story. And